The 13th of January 2024 saw the ruling party, the African National Congress, celebrate its 112th anniversary at the Mbombela Stadium in Mpumalanga, where the president of the party, Cyril Ramaphosa, delivered the popular January 8th statement. Since 1972, the ANC has been committed to the January 8th statement, which was initiated by the then uh, party president, Oliver Tambo, to highlight the party's achievement and goals. Baha'i Sudumelang, good evening and Happy New Year. Welcome to this uh, first edition of Soweto Today. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. Welcome again. We are joined in studio by uh, political analyst Sipoma Seho just to help us unpack the activities that have taken place in the African National Congress recently, you know, including the party's 112th anniversary that was celebrated at the weekend in Mpumalanga. He joins us in studio this evening. Uh, Sipo, thanks very much. Compliments of the new season. Compliments to, of the new season to you and uh, good evening to all the viewers of Soweto TV. Much appreciated. I mean, quite a lot of things have been happening within the uh, political sphere, but I want us to just focus on the ANC, particularly looking at the 112 celebrations that uh, happened this weekend mm. in Mpumalanga. Uh, let me just get your reflection on, uh, you know, uh, the whole event in its entirety, given uh, what we've been going through as a country. I mean, mm. uh, you know, there's quite a lot of issues, rolling blackouts, uh, you know, the economy is not doing well, um, the, the issues of non-payments of social grants. Mm. Um, uh, let me get your reflection on that, on the event itself in its entirety. Mm. Uh, I, I want to congratulate the African National Congress uh, for pulling 112 years of, uh, its, of its existence uh, which is a milestone. Um, if you listen to the president, you'd hear that he actually says this is the oldest liberation movement in the world. Uh, closest to it is the Chinese Communist Party, which is years behind the African National Congress. So it's, it's been a long journey and it was great. Uh, I was there myself. Um, I saw more than probably 100,000 people on my way to the stadium. Um, it was electrifying, amazing to see people. It was hot. Um, but people were making their way to the stadium mm -hmm. and I saw people of different walks of life enjoying and celebrating the African National Congress. What we saw from outside and making our way through to the stadium and going inside the pitch and in front of the stadium, the energy was electrifying. Because I mean, I was about to tell you that, uh, you know, I, I was watching some videos on Twitter um, uh, on X, it's, yeah. uh, which is formerly Twitter, and then you have been seeing uh, buses stretching as far as close to 20 kilometers, yeah. you know, from this stadium there. Yeah. Um, but particularly ANC choosing in Pumalanga, we know that it's one of its stronghold. Mm -hmm. um, how important was it for the party to host uh, the celebrations there? I mean, it's important, but also we know that traditionally the ANC rotates the January 8th celebration. So they move from province to province. So it was Mpumalanga's turn, but also it's the land of the rising sun. 2024 is a very important year for the ANC. And I think it was a good show of strength. Um, people kept saying the ANC is dead. Uh, what we saw, we were all amazed. And I'm talking media of all different walks where they were saying and shocked by the level of... Uh, how people were so enthused by having um, the ANC in Bumalanga. So it was actually amazing to see. Mm, I mean, um, w w uh, you know, when we started the show, I spoke about uh, the challenges that we've been having yeah. as a country. And then we know that uh, the last five years has been, um, have been very challenging for Absolutely. South Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the food basket has went up. The economy is not performing very well. Power cuts, you know, as I mentioned earlier on mm. recently, now we've been seeing Sasa also struggling mm. to pay uh, beneficiaries their uh, grants there. But the ANC was not focusing on the five years, but looking at 30 years um, yeah. since, uh, you know, the democratic dispensation. Mm. Um, let's talk about how important was it for them to reflect on that period. I think um, obviously 2024 is an important year. It marks 30 years of uh, the freedom of this country. And the ANC, uh, since the president delivered the manifesto review in Soweto, Toko Topsonville, he actually went out and said, Wait, King, it's not fair for us to just look at the last five years because we are going into the 30 years of our democracy. It's an election year. Let us reflect on the last 30 years. What have we achieved in the last 30 years? And in actually in his speech, he lists everything that has happened. Mm. 
um, the 86 years it took the ANC to fight for the liberation of, this peop of, of the, the, the people of South Africa, and then the 30 years of it in government. And then it, he lists all sorts of things, how the, free, uh, the, the constitution was formed, all the state institutions such as the yeah, uh, IEC and mm. the Public Protector's Office and all this, and just to separate government and have separation of power so that nobody can ultimately have ultimate power on their own, there must be measures of accountability, which have proven that they actually do exist. Where we could see the likes of Jacob Zuma, the guy, the courts were involved, no one could just ultimately have outright power. So these were actually things that were put in place by our forefathers, Bontate Nelson Mandela, which mm. they could see Jorge, down the line, it's possible that somebody will get a big head and not want to use uh, and abuse power. And I think he also mentions a whole lot of things around electricity. There's been a lot of achievements. Mm. More than 86% of the households have access to electricity, more than ever before. More than uh, just about 88% of the households have access to water. I mean, that's more than, than 1994. So there's, there's been a lot. Look where you and I are at, Rimorivoni. I mean, that's, the, you know, and there's so much I can list. But the president went to, to explain all these things. And then he also spoke to the challenges that you speak about, that not everything has been perfect. There has been missteps. Uh, I mean, we have so many issues we can speak to. Um, you know, the, the corruption, which is a big issue. Mm -hmm. Eskom, like you've mentioned, all those issues are out in the public for all of us to see. See, well, I want us to pocket that for now. Uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa did deliver uh, the political statement there at the 112 celebrations in Pumalanga. Let's take a listen. The democratic South Africa of today is very different from the lived experience of apartheid South Africa 30 years ago. There are those who say nothing has changed, but they also know that they are not telling the truth. Bayatanda, Noma Abatandi, the South Africa of today is different and vastly improved from the South Africa of 30 years ago. And that has been brought about by the African National Congress. That's President Cyril Ramaphosa there, the ANC president, uh, giving out the January 8th statement uh, there on, on behalf of the National Executive Committee and Mbombela, outlining the party's plans and priorities uh, for the year ahead, uh, you know, addressing some of the key issues facing the country there. I mean, Sipa, I want to pick your brain just after the ad break. Uh, talking about the issues of consequence management there, I saw uh, the likes of uh, Faith Mutambi, the likes of um, Zondile Masina, you know, there's quite a lot of them. And now recently with the allegations that NSFAS, uh, you know, fingering the higher education minister, Dr. Bladen Zimandeda. But I just want to get your thoughts on that after the ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Mulukwan. If you just tuned in, we are in conversation with political analyst Sipoma Seho just to unpack all things, uh, the ANC and uh, the celebrations that happened uh, there in Mpumalanga, the 112th celebrations. Sipo, thanks very much for staying on. I mean, you touched on the issue um, of uh, corruption uh, earlier on before we went to the ad break, but uh, there are recent allegations, you know, um, uh, leveled against uh, some of uh, the party's top officials. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, the likes of um, uh, Dr. Bladen Zimande, they uh, particularly looking at the issues that are happening at NSF. The academic year has started today for the mm -hmm. TVET colleges. Uh, the universities are starting next month. Yeah. Uh, there are quite an array of issues there. Uh, the, 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 the chairperson, the board chairperson has taken leave of absence and we saw the CEO, uh, you know, being fired there. Quite a lot of issues mm -hmm. and it shows you the extent of corruption, not only at NSOS, but quite a lot of issues. Uh, is the ANC government serious about consequence management? Look, I mean, I think uh, to think that corruption is just an ANC thing, it's, uh, we are delusional. Yeah. Corruption is a human problem. I think if we need to look at corruption, we need to have a, a conversation, I'll, and I'll speak to the ANC, but we need to have a conversation as a country to say, because corruption moves from government banks to other banks, 
the banks, all the banks, the money flows through there. They benefit from corruption, mm -hmm. including uh, the, the people like, for instance, um, auditors. You remember the story of the KPMG? Yeah. And there's KPMG. many others. Mm -hmm. The private sector corruption, the private sector does business with who? With government. Some of them are individuals masquerading as business people and they're going to business with the state and they steal from the state. I don't think it's fair that we should say that the ANC is corrupt because it's the individuals themselves who are corrupt. And I think the president also said that. And I think we need to be able to say that corruption is a human problem and we need to address it. And it's not just a South African problem, it's a worldwide problem. The banks um, are a big problem in, in the economy of the world and that's corruption. And also you look at all the big companies that do corruption by taking minerals from South Africa, mm -hmm. that's corruption. And we need to look at it in its entirety. But the ANC itself needs to have a proper way of being able to manage with those who are fingered to be corrupt. Um, the Integrity Commission is not enough. Um, there's no Integrity Commissions at the lower level, apart from just the national level. So what the province in, what the region in, there's very little in terms of how they play oversight on those who are given positions in power. So it needs to be able to fix itself and the Integrity Commission has no teeth at all. So they can't deal with anybody who's corrupt. And so also it's also another problem when you're a referee and you're a coach at the same time. Yeah. You're an NEC member, you're a member in government and now you must hold yourself account in the ANC. NEC, you can't hold yourself to account there. So I think the ANC needs to just re evolve very quickly and modernize and look at its own constitution and say, does it make sense that you are a president in the country, president in a state, now you must hold yourself to account. You're a chairperson here, you're a minister there. You're, it does not make sense. Who holds members of NEC to account? Mm. Pro uh, yeah. Um, you, I, I want us to shift gears. Let's talk about uh, the, 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 the issue that's uh, on everyone's mind, the MK party. Yeah. Mkonto uh, Sizwe, uh, we saw former president uh, Jacob Zuma um, publicly declaring that he would not support the ANC in the upcoming uh, elections this year, uh, endorsing Umkonto as he's saying to people that let's not vote for the ANC of Ramaphosa. Um, uh, quite um, a very intricate situation mm. uh, for the ANC because he hasn't resigned in the party and somehow, somehow um, you know, uh, he's actually, you know, um, um, uh, Putting it to the ANC out there that yeah. look, uh, what, are, what is it that you're going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think um, is going to happen to President um, uh, Jacob Zuma, to former President Jacob Zuma? And also, mm -hmm. what, why do you think the ANC has not taken a decision? Because normally they would have expelled him a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, I think the ANC is very aware that Jacob Zuma is very sensational, he's very dramatic and he wants attention. So he, he then says, no, vote for that one and I'm still a member because he wants to be expelled so that he stays in the media and in the center of attention for a very long time. The media also plays to the gallery uh, because they give him very, very much a lot of coverage. Uh, Jacob Zuma has a lot of issues on his head. There's a big cloud over his head, including those who actually followed him into the MK. So let's say you're a criminal today. And then tomorrow you say, no, I'm no longer a criminal. And then everybody now all of a sudden believes that you're no longer a criminal. This is exactly what's happening with Jacob Zuma. But people will follow him because also, it's also traditional, this thing. It's very ethnic. Mm. So it becomes now Mazulu and all of that. But if you look at how it's growing, it's growing mostly in KZN. Are they interested in the MK party? Most of them are not, because they can see the elements of it. And a lot of the elements are people who are either have uh, been uh, expelled from the ANC and they are going disciplinary issues and they then jump ship or they lost power. And that's what happens. So I don't know um, whether this party is going to make a huge dent nationally, but definitely in the province of uh, KZN. Jacob Zuma's got a lot of support there. We've seen that and people are backing him up.
Um, you know, I wanted to touch on it, but I want us to watch an insert there, particularly uh, on the issue that, uh, you know, people have been raising on social media saying that uh, Mkonto Wesizo does not have a constitution, doesn't have, uh, you know, policies in place, and then people are just following them for the sake of just following the former president there. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get um, your, um, you know, uh, analysis on, on that, but we will touch on that. Uh, Zuma's move to Mkonto Wesizo caused, uh, you know, shake the ground a bit uh, so much that secrets were revealed about him, particularly the Nganta compound fire pool controversy uh, uh, caused by ANC Secretary General Figilem Balula. Before we dive into that, let's just refresh our minds on it. We went to Parliament and opened an ad hoc committee and said uh, a swimming pool is a fire pool. We have only swimming pool there, your dad. Say chincha sati fire pool. U minister, u minister of police, ebi le kope nga selanga kiwala. U bona kuti lento bupkoki. Kunzi mu explain bupkoki ka loku. People have lost their careers because of that thing. Ya ye constitutional court. That is a voter in two, two weeks time. Wabu yum huen muhuen. Get judgment enjan. Wabata u president we to wati is not fit for office. Samia mezel. And a lot of I chuang and him good is not fit for office. Yai palwe panzi. He caught judgment. Ila cho mi akum huem huen yamona i cho mingoku. But chai vababi ni and bazi. But um huem huem, wakupa i judgment, wabasa um sholos, sam nyameze. Namtange uta kakwazu nyameze lu president wetu. Onga zange wabetwa i judgment. Political analyst uh, Sipoma Seho is still joining us in studio. I will get to his comments on uh, what uh, the Secretary General of the ANC, Fikilam Balula, said uh, there. Uh, controversial statement indeed. Uh, we saw a leaked audio from the former police minister, Natin Kleko, refuting that, saying that uh, Fikilam Balula is actually the worst um, ANC leader, uh, I mean, Secretary General, that has ever been there. But I just want to get your sense on that. Let's take a quick ad break. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We are almost at the end of the show. Political analyst Sipo Masio is still with us just to wrap up uh, the conversation. Sipo, thanks very much. Um, uh, you know, you heard before the ad break, uh, Secretary General of the ANC, Fikin Balula, that I want to know, is this an on goal or what? I mean, you come up to a public platform and then you admit to have committed, uh, you know, should I say perjury? Mm. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. how do you do that? as a, a member of um, um, the ruling ANC? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we've always known that uh, the Secretary General Figilem Balula has got a wild mouth. So he, he always blubbers and he says the wrong things. He always puts his mouth in his... And, uh, and of course, it was one of those days where he just says things that he shouldn't say. Uh, but he's not telling a lie. He's telling the truth because what he says is exactly what happened. He's not saying anything and uh, that is different from what is in the papers, that the ANC did defend Zuma. The ANC, with very little information, did think that they were supportive to Jacob Zuma because the officials were giving them the reports. And only when the digging of the Nkanda issue, more information started coming out, when it started going to court, more information started going out until there was also a disunity within the caucus saying those that don't support uh, what Jacob Zuma has done. And there was friction at the time. But all of that information is right there. I think what the Secretary General did wrong was to admit to such a crime or such an issue yeah. in an election year. Because right now, a week after he has made those statements, it's still a topic of conversations. Whereas there's a whole long list of things that are very critical that has been said by the president, but is not occupying the minds of South Africans, that are occupied by a 10 percent clip. Mm. Yeah. I mean, uh, topic, uh, uh, as you're talking about some of the issues of uh, which are topic of conversation, I want us uh, to talk about uh, the uh, letter that was uh, directed to uh, the electoral committee uh, chairperson for the ANC, Khalima Matlante, by Nkosa Sanat Zuma recently, it was released on, I think it was on the 12th. Yeah. Uh, you know, being invited to the interviews for National List, um, she did say that uh, she's actually retiring 
from Parliament. Should we take it as it is, or you know, there's somewhere somehow an issue uh, that uh, I mean, an, an announcement that we can expect because you know, there's been talks that she might be joining um, uh, the uh, former president there. Mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, at the MK party. Uh, do we just take that announcement that, uh, look, I'm not going to serve uh, for uh, the sixth term mm -hmm. um, of, 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 of government? I am retiring on politics. Mm -hmm. Should we just take it as it is? Absolutely. I mean, uh, there are two issues here. One is that there's a possibility that she could join. But I think Umama must just rest. She's old. She must just go and take care of the grandkids and rest and retire, but at the same time she does know that she's got no way of making it back on the list because the list process of the ANC currently it's going to cut down a whole lot of MPs that are not going to make their way back. Mm -hmm. The current members of the NEC members are going to have a fresh preference on the top of the list and then of course there will be sprinkles of people from different provinces and regions who will make it through to Parliament, but she's definitely not going to make it. I mean, in the interest of time, we know that uh, she voted with the opposition party in Parliament yeah. there on the uh, panel, the 89 uh, panel report there on Palapala. Pala. Yeah. And then somewhere, somehow, she became unpopular within the ANC ranks there. But the ICJ, there's a case that uh, has been, um, you know, um, uh, th that we heard uh, last week, mm -hmm. uh, South Africa against Israel on the genocide matter. We know uh, 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 now we are waiting for a provisional ruling mm -hmm. from the ICJ. Do you think that um, the International Court of Justice will rule uh, in favor of South Africa or they will rule in favor of Israel? Uh, we saw Mukaito, we, Mukaito be the senior um, uh, counsel uh, representing South Africa there, um, just putting it out there to the world that actually uh, the, 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 I mean, Israel is committing atrocities uh, mm. to the Palestinians there. There are visuals that have been covered by media houses and stuff. Do you think that will actually solidify a case? Um, well, I, I've got two minds on this issue. First of all, congratulations to South Africa for actually stepping up. Uh, nobody else in the world can stand up against God's nation, which is Israel. Um, and South Africa stood up, so well done on them. Uh, I don't know if we can resolve this issue. This issue has been there since David and Goliath. Mm. We think we can end that war, and it's probably a biblical war and a spiritual war. We don't know if we are standing on the wrong side of history because the ANC belongs and supports Palestine. The state is an African state, and an Af uh, it's a Christian state, and a Christian state goes with Israel because that's what the church goes with. Mm. And now the ANC and the country is leading the country into going with Palestine. So I don't know biblically how it might impact us. Those who are spiritual will understand what I'm saying. But because of what we can see, let it be. South Africa is getting the attention from standing up against this country, uh, Israel. But um, they don't have a good history of solving issues of atrocities. They haven't solved the issues of um, countries like France, the mm. US, all these other presidents have committed more heinous crimes than what the, the people of Israel are doing. But we, and we don't know if they can actually solve any of the world's problems. So they haven't been able, they don't have a good track record. So I, I don't know if there's going to, we are going to see this issue of Palestine and Israel being solved in our lifetime. Interesting times indeed, uh, but uh, unfortunately we've ran out of time. I wanted to gauge you on South Africa going up against the U.S. now, or yeah. particularly on the same matter. That we know that uh, uh, you know the U.S. has had uh, the former president Nelson Mandela on the terrorist list yeah. until 2000. I mean until 1998. Yeah. Uh, so there's quite a lot of issues that are yeah. at play, uh, particularly looking at how this issue is going to. Uh, you know, play out yeah. in the next uh, few weeks. But we're waiting for the International Court of Justice also to give us that provisional ruling. Sipo Masio, much appreciated for coming. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you. That was uh, political analyst Sipo Masio giving us an insight on uh, the heap of news and activities that have occurred within the ruling party, the African National Congress, 112 celebrations and also uh, you know, looking at uh, what has been happening within the ANC in its entirety, the issue of the fire pool, the issues of corruption, there, uh, you know, speeches that uh, 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 have been made by the likes of Figilem Balula there.
the resignations or the retirement of uh, the likes of Nkwasa Sanatlamini Zuma from uh, politics uh, as she said that uh, she won't be available to serve uh, uh, if the ANC wins uh, in the 2024 elections. There. Well, that's uh, how we wrap it up uh, for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. Please uh, talk to us about this episode. Simply send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za or you can uh, simply call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself, Tabo Mulukwane, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.